Right, to start off we're going to need some water and we're going to fill that into about 5 mils depth. That should be fine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a few drops of household detergent and what that does is it reduces the tension on the, on the water surface which means that you can just make better waves. And I'm not going to try and make bubbles with that, I'm just going to move it around so it starts to mix with the water trying not to make bubbles because once we have the light on any bubbles will show up underneath and then to start off with I'm just going to plug my light in I can see the ripple tank isn't completely flat so I need to adjust it so it is I'm going to pull that leg just a little bit further in and this one that one down a little bit and there I have it completely flat. Now I'm going to use a power supply and uh, this, is, this halogen bulb takes 12 volts. Plug that in and then we have our lights on. I'm going to move that so it's in the center of the tank, over the tank. Now I can already start illustrating waves just by showing for example uh, with this little pipette I fetched, just a, a single wave drop and if you are working on a dark surface you would want to put down a page over here so that you can clearly see the waves on on the table below the ripple tank so here I can make a little wave pattern and they can see the little waves moving away from the drop then if I wanted to make a, a linear wave a flat wave I'm going, I can use this ripple, this bar over here. I'm going to put this into the water and then without moving the whole tank, just move it back and forward like that and then you can actually see the wave pattern underneath the tank on the surface. I can do that regularly to create the waves. Right. Now, using the dropper, and the bar, I can create circular or straight waves and then use the barriers to show reflection or refraction uh, and uh, do my demonstrations. But then we also have included then that motor with the ripple bar. And so I'm going to connect that up over here. Connect it on the side, there we go. And hang that. Now I just want to, if I'm for example showing a, a single point, I'm going to have one of those pointing down then. And then I'm going to lower it until that ball is just touching the surface of the water. There we go. Then I can plug that into my speed controller. And that should turn on. And what I've done is I've got it on the minimum setting. And there I have that wave pattern in the water. Now I can use my barriers to illustrate, for example, what happens if I have that circular wave pattern and it hits a barrier at 45 degrees. And then they'll be able to see the wave reflecting off. Now if I wanted to show a straight wave, then what I can do is, let's just turn that off, and turn that the other way, and then I'm going to lower it a bit, so that the actual bar is just touching the surface of the water. There we go. Now below the tank they can observe how the waves are moving straight, hitting that surface and then being uh, reflected off it at an angle. I can also show uh, 
fraction of that wave as it hits a shallow uh, depth of water. So I'm wanting you to use my rectangular prism now and I need to get that just below the surface of the water. So I push it down and if the water doesn't cover the surface immediately, just draw the water over the surface, just like that. Right. Now I'm going to turn the motor on, I can actually see the waves coming forward, hitting that prism and then refracting around the edges and going over the, the prism. I can then turn it at an angle to see how the wave would interact if it was hitting that shallow water at an angle along the edge of it. Then to really see it clearly, I'm going to use the stroboscope. I'm going to get an angle where I can see underneath the tank really well and then turn the stroboscope until it matches the frequency of the wave. And then I can really start to get a clear image of what the waves are doing around that prism. And there we have it. I hope you enjoy using this in the classroom. It's a great resource and uh, feel free to give us feedback.